welcome everybody and thank you very much for, for coming this evening on a, on a slightly kind of gloomy, sort of dank night. But um, uh, hopefully we've got uh, uh, you know, lots to kind of tell you and, and, um, uh, and plenty of kind of colleagues and, and, and current students here to talk to you about studying here at a, at a variety of, of, of levels. We've actually got people here who, who, who we know and people who we are going to uh, get to know um, who are interested at, at, at studying at uh, BA level, at MA level, PhD level. And so through the afternoon, there'll be opportunities to find out very specific details about all of those things. I just want to make some, some general comments about um, the history of art department at York and, and about kind of being here and, and studying history of art here that hopefully will kind of, um, um, set the scene a bit, give you some things to think about and um, some things to ask us questions uh, about later. So welcome to, to everybody, whatever you're here to, to find out about. Some simple you know, headline statements about you know, why uh, study history of art uh, at York, and I'll talk um, about all of these things in a little bit more detail as we go, go through, but just some, some kind of clear statements. First one there, you know, academic uh, excellence. We really are um, one of the best history of art departments, not just in the country, but uh, uh, internationally. Um, we have great students doing tremendous uh, work here and a, a full range of, of research active staff producing you know, kind of top quality history of art uh, research. Just to kind of put a few sort of statistics to that, um, in our last um, you know, graduating cohort of undergraduate students, about 30% kind of, of those students were getting first class degrees. As we went through our, our exam board for the um, master students just, just this term, so again, the graduating master students, we were looking at about half of those students getting kind of distinctions. We've got a great track record of, of, of PhD students finishing their, their theses and, and kind of passing with, with, with flying colours. We know that what we're doing here is really kind of top, top quality stuff. Just in that uh, MA exam board, we are, uh, one of our external examiners made the comment, and I won't say where he came from, I wish our MA students were as good as yours. So we actually know that we've got you know, the very best people here at every level, every, every part of our activity. <coughs> We benefit from being in a wonderful place to study history of art, uh, York, as, as, as some of you will, will, will know well, others who, who may be visiting to, to find out, is a, you know, a place with a very, very kind of rich and diverse uh, culture and kind of range of, of um, art, architecture and, and artefacts, and I'll say a bit more about that in a moment. The history of Art Department York is a very outward-facing uh, department. Uh, we like to kind of get out there. We have lots of kind of contacts with, with partner organisations right the way across the country and, and in far-flung places uh, kind of abroad. But we've developed more kind of formal, specific uh, partnerships with galleries and museums that I'll talk about in a moment. And uh, many of us are working together collaboratively with, with people outside of academia. We're very kind of conscious about our role out there in a wider art historical community to say that art history is not something just practiced within a university. It's practiced all, in all kinds of different contexts and we're very aware of that. And we hope that that offers, we know that that offers lots of kind of opportunities for everyone who's part of our community here to uh, work with local, national, international uh, organizations. And very finally, I put just down there the thing about uh, people. We like to think that we are a very kind of inclusive, friendly, uh, uh, warm, open kind of place to, to, to be. Uh, we have kind of good relations uh, you know, with staff, staff and students. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as kind of a, a kind of supportive uh, community. And just to think, if you're thinking about kind of where, where you want to study, it's important just to, to really kind of focus on that uh, aspect of the people that you'll be studying with. Who will be your peers? Who will be your key contacts and, and, and your key kind of network for the rest of your lives? And we think that in, in York, we've got uh, exactly the sort of people you want to study with and to know beyond. Okay, so just to continue that, that theme about people, just give you a, a kind of sense of, of um, the size and kind of scope of, of, of the department. Just a few, they, these are kind of approximate numbers for, for some of them because they do you know, vary slightly uh, year to year, but currently we have 20 members of, of, um, of, of academic staff and there are some of us there uh, uh, um, uh, depicted 
Um, around 175 uh, undergraduate students across three years, around 35 uh, MA students. Some of those students will be on, on different programs, not all of them on, on the uh, MA in History of Art, but also uh, on, the, uh, on the MA in Stained Glass Conservation Heritage Management, part of, of um, uh, the, the uh, MA programs run in, in the uh, interdisciplinary um, research centres and humanities, and around 60 PhD students. Again, that's a number that, that varies depending on how many people are finishing and starting particular times. See, Paul, off, off you go. <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> now, uh, that makes us you know, one, of, one of the larger uh, history of art departments nationally and certainly one of the larger ones uh, internationally as well. And what does that offer? Well, that, that means that we can support a huge range of, kind of research in different areas of, of, of the history of art. Uh, some of you may, may know some of our, 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 our specialisms, our kind of particular things that we do. Um, it means that actually we have a kind of great and large kind of community of, 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 of people in the department who are kind of research and studying uh, the history of, of architecture as well as art. We call ourselves the Department of History of Art, but that encompasses all kinds of, of objects I've just mentioned. You know, stained glass is one kind of particular thing. It's not a thing that you'll find in every history of art department. Um, you know, um, absolutely not. It's a, it's a thing that we can kind of support here because of our, because of our scale. Just also, just you can see from that, that photograph as, as, as well, um, we have a great kind of range of age of, of people here. And that may, you may think, well, is that, is that an important thing? No one's not kind of particularly old or kind of particularly young. We think actually that, that we've got um, a great kind of cross-section of, of, of people at kind of different stages of their, their, their career who are you know, energised in particular different ways at, 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 diff at different points, who have lots of different outlooks. There are lots of people working in different kinds of ways with different methodologies. We think it's a department where it's constantly keeping afresh and abreast of the subject as it develops. There's also a very kind of diverse range of, of uh, nationalities and kind of cultures in the department as well. So just thinking about, again, about where you want to be, the people you want to meet, and the people you want to work with. We think we can really kind of support a very large range here. Now, the ideal location, I say York, as, as a place to study history of art. Um, some of those among you who, who know the city well will know all, all it has to offer. Uh, others who may be visiting particularly for, for this event. Obviously, the Minster is the you know, kind of standout feature of, of the city and kind of dominates uh, the cityscape in, in so many ways. But I thought, well, I'll put this up. So you can sit there while you're listening to me and work out well, where am I at the moment and see if you can find uh, where, where we are over here in the, King, in the King's Manor towards the end of that building. Nestling between uh, the York Art Gallery and the Yorkshire Museum uh, there, so two very, very important uh, institutions. Just the stones throw away from, from places such as the, the Treasurer's House over here, National Trust property. We have uh, the York kind of assembly rooms, one of the finest uh, 18th century buildings in, in, in the country. And right across the city, you've got uh, um, uh, amazing kind of buildings, collections, museums to, to consider. So a kind of a, a real kind of richness and, and range here in which to kind of situate yourself. 2,000 years of artifacts, buildings, documents, and resources. <coughs> and York has this uh, you know, wonderful kind of combination of the old and the new. We know that it has a kind of great reputation as a medieval city, but it's also, you know, it's a modern city, it's a developing city, and uh, the range of kind of exhibitions and, and uh, um, uh, you know, programs of, of, of the York Art Gallery have tried to kind of express that in very dramatic ways. This is just a, a, a beautiful photo of an exhibition that was held at York St Mary's a few years ago of Cornelia Parker's 30 pieces of silver that makes that point, I think, uh, very well. Looking just a bit more uh, widely, we like to kind of draw the, the map of, of Britain slightly uh, differently to, to others and uh, see that actually we are right in the centre of things. So those, those circles give you a good, good idea that um, you can see very clearly that we are equidistant between London and Edinburgh. It gives you opportunities to go in every direction 
from York, it's, it's fantastically well situated on the, on the rail network that actually so many things are, are, are accessible from, from here. It's a wonderful place to access art and culture from. And there's just a sort of list of some things that are, are within a short distance, or either in York or a short distance from York, just to give a, a sense of kind of the scope from great uh, country houses with fantastic uh, collections to some of the best and finest uh, you know, modern art galleries uh, of, of today to uh, e extraordinary uh, medieval sites to, well, you can look, look down the list for yourself and get a, get a sense of, of everything that is here and hereabouts. And we like to get out there and see such things. I just saw um, Mariana in the, in the audience there who went on this particular trip to uh, uh, Fountains Abbey, so she can tell you a bit more, bit more about it later if you're, if you're interested. And I, I, I discovered this photo the other day when thinking about putting this presentation together. And one of the wonderful things about it, actually, is, is the, this was a, an MA trip, wasn't it? It was a master's student, but actually, so we've got Rebecca there doing a, a PhD now. We've got uh, Mariana there doing a PhD. We've got Helen doing a PhD. Leah doing a, a, a PhD. Oliver there doing a PhD. Actually, it was a great kind of uh, a group of MA students, who, uh, many of whom have have stayed on and carried further on with their studies, and others have gone off to do uh, very interesting things after. I'll mention Krista later. We've got uh, uh, Frankie there is now at the Paul Mellon Centre in, in London. Uh, so the other things that are now, um, I would say, on our doorstep, but very, very kind of accessible for York, I'd say, you know, great um, collections of, of modern art and fantastic buildings. I don't know if anyone's picked up copy of the book just published by the 20th Century Society, 100 Years, 100 Buildings. This is the final uh, uh, building in, in that book, uh, the Hepworth Gallery uh, in Wakefield, that's signed by uh, David Chipperfield, that we are going to regularly have built up a good uh, relationship with. We have a, an MA uh, student placed there currently, and we're hoping to continue that uh, in the future. Now, closer at hand, um, and you will have walked past it, is uh, uh, the York Art Gallery itself. And, and that has been closed for the, the last uh, couple of years for, for major refurbishment. So anyone who's actually been, been a student here at, at the moment will not have had the kind of full experience of, 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 of the Art Gallery. But it has been a, you know, a wonderful uh, partner for us over, over many years and a place that, that our students have, have enjoyed and benefited from uh, close engagement. I think I can see... I think I can see our, our uh, undergraduate admissions officer in the background of this uh, this picture, lurking behind a hat. This was a this was a hat party at a hat exhibition, New York Art Gallery, a few years ago. We actually had wonderful um, events and occasions in there, and we're looking forward to you know many more when it reopens uh, uh, next summer. As we say, it's been a key partner of the Art Gallery, and we're looking forward to doing a lot more work with it in the future when it reopens, where it'll be 60% bigger than it has been currently. We'll have amazing two dedicated ceramics galleries which will present its extraordinary collections of 20th century uh, ceramic art. Um, a colleague of mine is working on a, on a major exhibition that will, that will take place shortly after its reopening. We've got, again, a, an MA uh, a student place with the gallery. It's been actually, that's been ongoing through its closure, working on research uh, projects there. Now, these partnerships that uh, just mentioned are with so the York Museum's Trust, and that's, that's the art gallery Yorkshire Museum, which has astonishing and amazing collections of um, um, antique art and, 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 and medieval art. Um, but then these national galleries, the, the Victoria and Albert Museum, Tate, and a National Gallery. And these partnerships have kind of really kind of blossomed just, just recently in, in a series of, of uh, uh, amazing exhibitions that staff have been involved in. So this is, should fade in. Uh, this began at the start of the year with uh, Jean Uteline's uh, exhibition Strange Beauty at the National Gallery uh, in London, and then overlapping and continuing with Amanda Lilly's uh, Building the Picture uh, exhibition, which received amazing coverage. I don't know if people followed that over, over the summer. Extraordinary uh, reviews and, and commentary right the way across the media and internationally. Hi there. Um, my own? Wandering and <laughs> Studios exhibition at Tate Level, but I've kind of yeah, plugged myself in as part of all of this. And 
recently opened at the Yale Center for British Art in uh, New Haven, uh, Jason Edwards' uh, Sculpture Victorious exhibition, which will be coming to Tate Britain uh, in the spring. What date does it open? February 28th. February 28th. So, she will get down there to see some of the extraordinary, literally extraordinary objects that are going to be in it. Now, it's not just um, staff who've been involved in these, these sorts of uh, um, events and sort of big, high-profile events. That's also involved a lot of our research students. Um, that includes um, I don't know, Rachel Smith, who you know, has been on a collaborative uh, PhD with um, Tate, who co-curated this exhibition, International Exchanges, Modern Art, and St. Ives, that was on at Tate's and Ives over the summer and is now at the Middlesbrough Institute of Modern Art uh, as we speak. So I'd recommend going to see that if you if you didn't see it uh, in, in St. Ives. We also had a number of, of PhD students who had um, exhibitions at the Henry Moore uh, Institute, uh, working with Jason on kind of sculpture uh, projects, and also uh, Cora gives some, um, gives some wear at the BP Spotlight uh, exhibition at, at Tate Britain as well. So these research students are really kind of embedded in the work we're doing with our partner uh, organizations. We really see kind of students as part of our kind of research community. Just a couple of more little kind of plugs for what's, what's going on at the moment. So um, as I mentioned before, all kind of stuff are, are research active, publishing all the time. I want to give you kind of an exhaustive list. Uh, I know the last couple of years I've seen you know, a huge number of, of, of publications come out of the department. These are just a couple of very, very recent things. I want to show you what's current. Uh, Sarah Brown, who's uh, in the audience here, her wonderful book on the Great East Window of York Minster. That's been an amazing you know, um, research project you know, run through the department, working with uh, English Heritage and, and, and York Minster on the conservation and, and redisplay of this amazing uh, work of medieval art. And uh, had to be there, had, had to get a, a, a photograph in to show you how big it is, which is Emanuele Lili's book on, on, on metric measurement, which is a really kind of interesting thing. So what's an art historian? working on that for, because it relates to everything that gets built and, and, and made. It's an extraordinary uh, book on the story of the metric system in Italy. So just uh, out. Okay, so just a very few few comments at, uh, uh, at the end. I thought it would be interesting just to comment briefly on, well, what, what do people actually do with, with history of art uh, degrees? I know this is a kind of concern uh, for, every, for everyone these days. So I just put together a little, a little, um, a, a few, found a few people who are doing things, sort of slightly unexpected things, things that are, are a bit um, left field slightly, you know, we wouldn't have anticipated that such things even kind of existed uh, as jobs. Here, this is um, uh, an, an alumna, Louise Cohen, who was in her day editor of uh, student newspaper York Vision uh, in the university, who is now, as you'll see, social media and digital content manager for the Royal Academy in London. So you can, you can tweet for a living. Isn't that great? So, <laughs> so there. Uh, and so I'd recommend you'll start following uh, Louise. Um, I mentioned Krista earlier. This is Krista Hajisabutra, um, an Indonesian student who, who uh, was an MA student here a couple of years ago. This is her Instagram page. We're going very social media here, you can see. She's now back in, in, in Jakarta working for UNESCO and working on the preservation of, of historic buildings uh, in, in, in Indonesia. And finally, a more familiar face, so this is going through BA, MA, PhD. Uh, Janina Ramirez, um, a PhD student from, from the department, former PhD student, who now it may be familiar to you as a face on our TV screens, who's now sort of taking you know, art history to this uh, very large audience. And I just want to make this comment at the end about what um, studying history of art of York can, can do for you generally. Um, you know, art and history of art is a subject that's, that's of great interest to an enormous uh, audience. You have the opportunity here to develop real kind of expertise in it, which gives you a great opportunity then to communicate that to this very kind of interested audience in all kinds of ways that you may not have even realized uh, uh, at the moment. The landscape is changing very, very uh, uh, rapidly. So I'm just going to leave it there with some of those thoughts and I'm happy to take some questions. I know that we're already slightly behind.